Hey everybody, Pastor Brendan Witten here. Welcome back once again for another Faith Fuel video devotional. So honored to have you join me just to study the Word of God. It's Holy Week. We're doing a week of prayer and fasting here at Toronto City Church, which I'm excited about what God's doing. So uh, let's let's just dive in. Let's push into things. There, there's so much good stuff that we can just go after today. Uh, if you're tuning in at the 7 a.m. premiere, uh, give a shout out in the chat. Let people know you're here. If you're tuning in otherwise, it's always it's great to have you. So here's what we're doing this week. It, it's Holy Week. We're doing a week of prayer and fasting and every day, Monday through Thursday this week. I just want to take, uh, we really want to look to Jesus. That's what we talked about yesterday. We want to look to him and we really just want to focus on what he's done for us and just who he is to us, especially in context of what we're focusing on over the Easter season. And so we, we spent some time yesterday in Hebrews chapter 12 and every day we're just going to go to a different passage and we're going to look at it and we're just going to meditate and dive into the word of God and, and grow in this together. So, uh, if you want to turn with me today, and we're going to go to Romans 5, 6 to 11. So this is where we're going to focus on today, Romans 5, 6 to 11. And Romans 5, 6 to 11 says this, For while we were still weak, at the right time God Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. But God showed his love for us in that while we are still sinners, Christ died for us. Since, therefore, we've been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God? For while we were his enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. How much more, now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life? More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Amazing passage. Let's unpack it for a little bit today and talk about some The first thing I want you to focus on, right there, verse 6, is for while we were still weak. You know, this ties a little bit, talks about while we're still weak. A little further down here, it says, while we were yet sinners. And I think it's really good, even this week, as we're looking to Jesus, as we're, you know, reflecting on just all, you know, Easter and reflecting everything that's happened. I think it's really important to remember where God's brought us from. Right? It's really important that we know who we are in Christ. It's really important that we know where he's brought us to. Because some believers have not stepped into who they are in Christ, what God's given for them. But, but I think many times we will not appreciate to the fullness that we need to what God has is done for us if we don't really have a revelation, remember, where he brought us from. Like, where would we be without Jesus? Where would you be without Jesus? I can tell you, well, I don't, I, where would I be without Jesus? I don't, I, I think I might be dead right now without Jesus. Um, I, I definitely, my life would be a mess without Jesus. But, but here's what happens is so often we, we taste of the good things of God. He works in our life in so many ways. Um, and, and so often we can become entitled. We can become prideful. We can start to feel like we've kind of, uh, you know, accomplish certain things that really was by the grace of God in our life. I think all of us need to be very aware of our capacity. Uh, we need to be very aware of our capacity for pride, our capacity to, to, to forget what God has done for us. And again, it's not that we live there like in shame or condemnation or I'm just a terrible sinner. But I think it's, it's really good. Now, you know, some people, if, if they really, you know, they've got kind of one of those testimonies where things were messed up and then they met Jesus and things changed. Often they, because it's really clear for them, right? But the longer you're a Christian or, or like myself, I grew up in church. I grew up a Christian. And it's so easy to forget who you would have been without Christ or who you were without Christ and to start becoming entitled, to start becoming self-righteous. And so I think it's good. Wow, we were still weak. Without Christ, we were weak. The Passion Translation says it this way. Uh, who, sinners who were entirely helpless, weak, and powerless to save themselves. Guys, we had no hope. We were on a one-way ticket to hell. We were without God. Right? While we were sinners. And, and, and while we were weak, we had nothing in ourselves. We had no strength in ourselves. But while we were weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. 
right? So at the right time, in the right season, Jesus came and he died for the ungodly. He died for each one of us. And I love because he died for the ungodly. We did not deserve what he did, right? We didn't deserve it. Now, now he, he gave it to us freely, but we didn't deserve it. And I think it's so important for us to remember, you know what, without him, I was weak. I did not deserve this. And again, not in putting yourself down. It's not about a false humility. But when you get the fact that I was weak, when you get the fact I didn't deserve this, it makes your thanksgiving that much more. Right? It makes your, your willingness to give and serve and love and sacrifice that much more because you realize, uh, you know, like, uh, like that old hymn said, he paid a debt he did not owe. I owed a debt I could not pay. Right? Like I had no chance. We had no hope. But while we were still in this ungodly state, Christ died for us. You know, moving on a little further, it says, um, you know, he makes the point, verse 7, for one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though for perhaps a good person, one might even dare to die. So he's saying, you know what, maybe if there's someone who's like super good, someone might dare to lay down their life. But he said, but here's what, but God showed his love for us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Right? While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And we still had a choice to reject him. We still had a choice to say no. There's still to this day people who will say no to him. And we'll say no to him. And yet, even when we're in that place of sin, Christ died for us. Let's really personalize that today. While I was a sinner, Christ died for me. While you were a sinner, Christ died for you. And this is how he showed his love. You know, one of the most powerful and important things for us to walk in as Christians is a revelation of God's love for us. Well, how do we grow in that love? Well, one of the easiest ways to see, experience someone's love for you is what they do for you. And, and it's so easy how many of us struggle and go, well, I just don't know if God loves me. It's like, whoa, whoa, hold on a second here. <laughs> what do you mean you don't know if God loves you? Right? And I understand some of it has to do with more of an experiential understanding of it. But, but at the beginning, the foundation, let's go back to the word. Right? God showed us his love. While we're still sinners, Christ died for us. Right? God showed us his love in, in Jesus giving his life to the cross. I remember hearing uh, kind of an anecdotal story of someone said they had a vision and and they saw Jesus in the vision. There's a conversation with Jesus. And they said, Jesus, how much do you love me? And, and Jesus said, you know, and kind of this whole, uh, you know, saying anecdote. I can't remember. Maybe it was even a poem. I don't remember. But Jesus said to them, he said, this much. And he stretched out his arms and he died. Right? You know, I don't know if you ever say, it was your kids. You say, well, how much? Well, it was this much. Well, he said it was this much. And he stretched his arms out and he died. Let us never doubt the love that God has for us. Because all we need to do is look to the cross. All we need to do is look to Jesus. Look to what he did for us, right? Go back to yesterday in the Hebrews. Look at what he plowed through for us. How could we dealt that love? I mean, almost on one level, I could see him say this, saying, what else can I do to show you how much I love you? Right? Like, what more could I do? I gave everything I had to save you. Wow, you were still a sinner. We didn't deserve it, but he did it anyways. Right? And so that we... We, we grow in that relationship. God loves us. Come on, just take a moment right now. Just take a moment, reflect right where you are. He loves me. Right? He loves us. And while we are even sinners, Christ came, he died for us. You know, read on a little further. It says, so since therefore we've now been justified by his blood. Now, what does justify mean? Because again, this is things Jesus did for us. Right? This is what we're thanking him for. This is what we're celebrating. Well, to be justified means to be made right. Right? So, Watch this, because sometimes people will center in on the fact, oh, yeah, we were sinners, and we didn't deserve it. And, and yes, we were sinners, and yes, we didn't deserve it. But in the middle of that, God still chose to justify us by his blood. And so to justify means to be made right, to be made righteous, to be declared uh, forgiven and free. So, so you ever some say, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. And it's like, no, that's not entirely correct. Hear me. It is. I'm not trying to contradict what I've just been saying to you. You were a sinner, but you've been saved by grace, and now you are justified. You stand before God in Jesus as if you've never sinned. And that's not, that's not something we came up with. That is what he decided to do for us. You stand before God justified. You and I stand before God as if we never sinned. Which is like the craziest thing in history because we've all sinned. We've all fallen short of his glory. We were weak. We were without hope. But in God, in his great love, he came and Jesus died for us. He took our place and we have been justified. 
We are not sinners saved by grace. We were sinners. We've been saved by grace. Now we have been justified in him. Right? And so there's this tension where we never, we, we should never forget where we were. But we should also recognize we're not there anymore. Right? Remember where you were. But remember, you're not there anymore. And, and, and it's wrong to forget where you were and become prideful. But it's also just as wrong to, to, to lose track or to deny where you are now and somehow think you're still back there. Right? You get what I'm saying? We've been justified. Come on, someone say, I've been justified. And the next part says, how much more shall we be saved from the wrath of God? Now, this is a whole conversation piece. I maybe can touch on it in, in the coming days. We'll see. But the wrath of God, that's not a phrase a lot of us use or a lot of us are familiar with. But the wrath of God refers to God's righteous judgment. Right now, we hear wrath. We just think like angry. We think someone is, you know, someone just whatever. But, but actually, what biblically, what the wrath just means, it means God's righteous judgment. In other words, God is love. God is good. God is our Father. God is also the judge of the universe. And he is 100% right, a 1,000% right to judge sin. Right? He's 1,000% he's right to, to pass judgment. And, and, and to do that, I mean, he is there. And there, there's, there's a whole piece of conversation that we could have here for this point because many of us have lost sight of that. We've lost sight of the righteousness of God and the fact that, that but, but here's what it is. There's this righteous judgment that he is, he is right to bring. He is right to bring it. And yet, because we've been justified, we've been saved from it. We have been saved from his judgment. In other words, he is the judge. He has to judge sin. But he loved us so much. He said, hey, I'm going to make a way of escape. I'm going to make a way for you to be justified. So you stand before me as if you never sinned. I mean, mind-blowing. But this is, when we look to Jesus, this is what he did. He died. He rose again. Demonstrating God's love. Justifying us. I love this. So, so we've been justified. We've been saved from the righteous judgment. Again, catch this. It's right for him to do this. It would actually be wrong for him not to judge sin. But, but, he, but we've been saved from that. And then the last part I want you to see is, and then there's this last part, we've been reconciled to God. Right? We were separated by sin. A lot of times you always say this. I'll say it my salvation calls. And we've been separated from God before we've sin. But let's really remember, no, we were separated from God. We were disconnected from his life. We were without hope, but Jesus came. And not only did he justify us, not only did he save us from righteous judgment, but he reconciled us and brought us home. He brought us back into relationship with our Father. He's the bridge that brought us back together. This is what Jesus did. Let, let's, this week, let's consider him. Let's get rid, let's just ask the Lord to show us. Even today, I'll ask the Lord to show you where, if you become entitled, if, if we become self-righteous, if we start to depend more on our good works instead of depending on Christ, and if we've lost sight of the fact that he justified us, that he saved us from righteous judgment, and that he reconciled us. He brought us back to the Father. We can now come freely to the throne of grace to find help and mercy. Now, this is Jesus. This is what he did. And, and let's look to him this week, and let, let's keep our eyes fixed on him. Let's remember what he's done for us. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we come before you. I thank you today just, just for what you did for us. I ask that you help each one of us to get a fresh revelation of where we were, but also where you brought us to. That we've been justified, we've been saved, we've been reconciled in you to the Father. So we love you, Lord. We thank you for us in Jesus' name. And the great set. Amen. All right. Well, you know the deal. It's been great to be together. Please make sure to join us in the fasting. Join us in the prayer. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Hit the like button if you enjoyed it. And share it with somebody else. We want to get this word out to as many people as possible. God bless you. We love you. Have an amazing day, and I'm going to see you again tomorrow.